Welcome to the week six recap for the Crescendo season. We have 10 district championship events, and of course, there were divisions as well, too, and 12 regional events that went down this weekend. Some incredible match play, high scores after high scores after high scores as well, too. And our correspondents are here to break down each of these events as well. Some of our events will be our shorter recaps as we go into our featured events for each region as well. Each district championship will have a full breakdown for it. So we hope you enjoy our recap here as is our last one of the crescendo season as we get ready for the world championship. So let's dive in to FRC recap. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. The Northeast Region had one event this week, which was the New York City Regional. This event was held in New York, New York, and hosted 52 teams. This regional has been held for over 20 years and is a great event year after year. In Quals 10, we have a red alliance made up of 369, 7730, and 9295, and a blue alliance made up of 4122, 5806, and 1796. This blue alliance is really interesting because 4122 is ranked 22nd at Tech Valley, but first at the New York City Regional. It's cool to see that continuous improvement from event to event. In auto, we see 1796 and 4122 pick up and score some notes for blue, and 369 gets it done for red. Entering Teleop, there is already a 30-point differential between these two alliances, and we'll have to see if red can change the game during this pivotal Teleop period. Throughout the rest of the match, the red alliance makes quick and coordinated cycles to the source, and the red alliance just cannot keep up. The match ends with three robots on the carpet for blue and one in the air for red. The match ends with a final score of 80 to 38. Heading into playoffs, let's take a look at finals two. What's really interesting about this match is that it's an Alliance three versus Alliance five matchup, meaning Alliances two and one were knocked out in previous rounds. It just goes to show that even though an Alliance might be seated number one, some good strategy and picks can shake things up. For your red Alliance, we have 3950 Robo Gym Robotics, 1796 the Robo Tigers, and 369 High Voltage Robotics. For your blue lines, you have 694 Stipulse, 6873 the Generals, and 2869 the Regal Eagles. From the beginning to the end of auto, the scores are pretty much neck and neck as the notes get cleared from the carpet. At the beginning of Teleop, machines on both alliances spring to life and we see some awesome driving by the Red Alliance. The coordination of these cycles is amazing, and the Blue Alliance does their best to hold their own too. Notes rain into the amp and the speakers, and the score stays close until about one minute left in play. After that, the Red Alliance begins to pull away. The match ends with one robot up for red and one for blue. The final score is 90-95 to 95 with a red victory. Moving into awards, Team 2869, the Regal Eagles, won the Regional Impact Award, and 4122, the Ossining Obots, won the Regional Engineering Inspiration Award. This was a great event, and one of the last places that teams had in order to punch their ticket to the championships. With that said, there are many solid teams that have already qualified, so champs is going to be good. First in the North, we travel to Ohio for the Miami Valley Regional. 5667 would take first after qualifications here and would attempt to select 4028, who would decline and form Alliance 2. Alliance 1 and 2 would meet in the finals to battle it out, but the number 2 Alliance would win both matches by a dominating combined total of 100 points. It would be Alliance 2 here taking home the blue banner. Congratulations to 4028, 2614, and 424. 8393 would take home impact and 4145 would take home engineering inspiration. Going northwest to Wisconsin for the Seven Ridge Rivers Regional, there'd be 54 teams here with a last chance to qualify for Houston and 
Unlike most regionals, there really wasn't a favorite going into this event, and there was really anyone's game. And with 10 matches per team and qualifications, there was a lot of action. Jumping into qualification match 71 for our featured match, and the, this would be the only match that 7021 would lose. Coming out of autonomous, it would be 26 to 22 due to a difference in mobility points, and we'd see 58-26 playing defense for blue throughout the entire match. Now, they were a lot more mobile than a lot of the defense we've seen this year, and they would definitely slow down red in multiple different areas, to the point where red would only get two amplification periods in. Their first amplification period would be at a minute and 30 left, and they would only score one note in this amplification period. Red would amplify again with 46 seconds to go, but only scored two notes that time for a total of three amplified notes scored in the match. And this lack of production while amplified would really cost Red, and Blue would win a close match 79-75. to However, in the silver lining for Red, they would still come away with the two ranking points thanks to 70-21's trap mechanism. 70-21 would take first seed with three ranking point lead after qualification and would set up the playoff matches. Jumping into playoffs match 11, we'd see 1v3 and another preview of the finals. This match would be 29 to 21 coming out of autonomous in favor of Alliance 3, but Alliance 1 would play defense at the speaker with blue going triple offense. These strategies did cause Alliance 1 to quickly come back from that 8-point deficit in auto, and they would take a 10-point lead with 90 seconds remaining in the match. Red would have their defense robot leave with around 45 seconds to go with around that same 8-point lead, and they would transition to 3 offense for the remainder of the match. For Blue, however, they would sneak in an amplification period with 15 seconds to go, pulling ahead by 5 points, with both alliances cycling to the buzzer, when the dust settled, Blue would eke out a one-point win, 96-95. to 95. They would rematch in the finals, where this time it would be Alliance 1 winning in two matches, with a little better use of their amplification periods. Congratulations to 70-21, 21-29, 21-29, and 95-76 on the gold, and congratulations to the number three lines of 88-02, 4230 and 537 on the silver. Congratulations to 1710 on the Impact Award and 525 on Engineering Inspiration. And I'm known at this event, despite this being a week six event, no wild cards were generated. Up here in the Northland of the US, we have two Minnesota regionals. Let's start off with a quick look at the first ever Minnesota Granite City Regional. Hosting 54 teams and 90 qualification matches with teams from Minnesota, North Dakota, and Wisconsin fighting it out. Taking the top spot at the end would be 3276 Toolcats going 8 and 2. They would pick up the third ranked team 7028 Binary Battalion and round off with 6045 Saber Robotics. This alliance would put up triple digit scores all the way through the upper bracket and match one of finals. They would face off against the number four seed team captained by 1816 Green Machine first pick 876 Thunder Robotics, and round off with 8188 Grand Force. Their first match going to Alliance 1 with a score of 109 to 85. In the second final match, unfortunately, an intake inside frame hit with about a minute left would leave 7028 dead. This would draw a red card and give the second win to Alliance 1. Congratulations to 3276, 7028, and 6045 on the event win, and 2883 Fred on the Impact Award, and 1816 picking up engineering inspiration. Moving a little bit down to the south to the 10,000 Lakes Tournament, another 61 Minnesota teams and one Czech Republic team battling it out through 93 qualification matches. Taking that top spot after all the chaos would be 25-30, inconceivable going 8-1. and one. They would pick up the 8th ranked team 2052 Nightcrawlers and round off with 3018 Nordic Storm. So let's jump to match number 7 of the upper bracket, we would see Alliance 1 versus Alliance 4 for the first time. Alliance 4 captained by 3926 Emperors, first pick 3630, and rounding off with 5434 Falcon Robotics, we would also see Alliance 1 with a backup team, 2169 King Tech, subbing in for 3018. This match would come down to a two-point victory. While Teleop would be more points scored by Alliance 1, Alliance 4 had a great auto stealing a center note from 2530, leaving their bot on the line not scoring. 
Alliance 4 would lead out of auto with 10 extra points, 41 to 31. This would overcome the shortcomings of Tally Up and the Endgame points. So these two teams would see each other once again in the finals. The first final match would only be a nine point separation. So unlike the first time they met, 36 30 would not go for the outer stolen note, and 25 30 would get it scored. While 36 30 would miss the second in center note they grabbed, this would be Alliance 1's five point lead out of auto. Tally Up would see both teams score the same amount of notes and amplify notes, giving the first win to Alliance 1. Unfortunately, in the second match, with about a minute 25 seconds left, we would see a big hit knock out 39-26, leaving them dead for the rest of the match, letting Alliance 1 take home that win. Once again, congrats to 25-30, 30-18, 21-69, and 20-52 on the event win. Also, congratulations to 24-72 Centurions on the Impact Award and the Czech Republic team 5996 RUR on their engineering inspiration win. These were some great events here in the land of Minnesota. Moving on to the next region. The Rocket City Regional in Huntsville, Alabama saw 49 teams from 10 states and 5 countries compete for one last shot at qualifying for the Houston Championship in two weeks. Among these teams were numerous powerhouses such as 2481 Roboteers from Tremont, Illinois, 4020 Cyber Tribe from Kingsport, Tennessee, 4265 Secret City Wild Bots from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, 4499 The Highlanders from Fort Collins, Colorado, 4635 Prepatech Bot Busters from Monterey, Nuevo Leon, Mexico, 6517 Snow No Robo from Knoxville, Tennessee, and 6652 Tigres, also from Monterey. 4635 emerged as an early candidate for taking home the event, going undefeated in quals with a 10-0-0 record and finishing as the first seed with a full four ranking point margin ahead of second place. 4635 would go on to select 2481 Roboteers as their first pick and round out their alliance with 5002 Dragon Robotics from Collierville, Tennessee. 4635 would continue their undefeated streak in Elims, where the number one alliance would cruise through the upper racket to face the number two alliance of 4265 Secret City Wildbots, 6517 Snow No Robo, and 7111 Rad Robotics, locally based in Huntsville. 4635 undefeated streak would continue, however, as Alliance 1 would easily take both finals matches with scores of 120 to 60 and 94 to 80. Congratulations to the number one alliance. Congratulations are also in order for 9787 Fathom Robotics from Baker, Florida for taking home the Rookie All-Star Award and having a team member take home a Dean's List Finalist Award in their rookie year. Congratulations to 2638 Rebel Robotics from Great Neck, New York on their Engineering Inspiration Award win. And finally, congratulations to 6652 Tigres on the Regional First Impact Award win. Moving almost due west to the Sooner State, the Oklahoma Regional at the Oklahoma State Fair in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, try saying that 10 times fast, saw 48 teams from 7 states and 2 countries battle it out for their last chance at qualifying for the World Championships. This lineup included many big names such as 31 Prime Movers from Jenks, Oklahoma, 59 Ram Tech from Miami, Florida, 15, 1561 Roboducks from Oklahoma City, 2122 Team Taters from Boise, Idaho, 3284 Camden Laser from Canton, Missouri, 5013 Trobots from Kansas City, Missouri, 6026 Tiger Strike from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 6647 Prepatech Voltec Robotics from Monterey, Nuevo Leon, Mexico, and 9401 Midas's Mayhem from Troy, Missouri. Despite the stacked lineup, the expectation coming into this event from those attending was that 21, 22, or 59 would seed first and pick the other one, which would more or less decide the event. But that's not how things shook out at all. Early on in qualifications, pretty much every big name team would drop a few matches due to a variety of reasons. And even when all robots were working mechanically, it seems like the schedule generation software really wanted to see the top teams face off over and over again. When the dust ultimately settled, it was 5889 Commando Bots from Tulsa, Oklahoma that took the well-earned number one spot. Their first two picks would be 2122 and 59, who would both decline, and essentially this set the stage for a wide-open elimination bracket. As a side note, when you see all eight Alliance Captains and some of their first picks on their phones during Alliance selection, you know that it's going to be an exciting tournament. With that said, after a tense few minutes, 5889 would pick 5013 Trobots as their first pick and would round out their alliance with 2165 Bison Bots from Bartlesville, Oklahoma. 
However, the number one alliance would see an early exit, tying for seventh place after losing to the number eight and number four alliances. When finals finally did roll around, it would be the number two alliance in red of 50, 1561 Roboducks, 935 Rail Robotics from Newton, Kansas, and 1209 Robo Hornets from Tulsa, Oklahoma, against the number three alliance of 2122 Team Taters, 9401 Midas' Mayhem, and 2373 The Crickets from Fort Cobb, Oklahoma in blue. Alliance number three would take the first match by a slim margin of 84 to 79, before Alliance number two would take the second match 106 to 102, making it a tied series. In finals three, the number three alliance would very quickly amplify their strategy and use that momentum to take them to victory with a score of 107 to 72. Congratulations to the number three alliance on a well-earned victory. Congratulations are also in order for 9495 Tech No Difficulties from Aurora, Nebraska on the rookie all-star win. Congratulations as well to my own team, 2718 Team OKC Epossums on their Engineering Inspiration Award win. And a huge congratulations to 6647 Prepatech Voltech Robotics on the Regional First Impact Award. Oklahoma as a region is continuing to steadily grow and improve year after year. And I can't wait to see how these teams perform in the future. First, a quick recap of this year's 2024 Bayou Regional. 53 teams came together in Kenner, Louisiana for this year's 2024 Bayou Regional. Congratulations to the winning number one alliance of 3478 Prepatech Lambda, 4738 Patriots, and 1912 Team Combustion. Taking home the Regional Impact Award was Team 6017 Prepatech Siberius, and the Regional Engineering Inspiration Award winner was Team 456 Siege Robotics. Now jumping into one of our other featured events for the South Region this week, we had the 2024 Greater Kansas City Regional. This past weekend, 42 teams gathered at Lee Summit North High School in Lee Summit, Missouri for the Greater Kansas City Regional. There were a number of teams coming into this event, all vying to grab the number one seed and walk away with a win, including 1730, 1987, 2357, 4522, 4766, and 5801. Let's dive right in as the playoffs for this event was filled with upsets, which leads us to round four of match 12 in the lower bracket, where you have the number two seed in red, 2357 System Meltdown, their first pick, 1987 the Broncobots, and 1825 the Cyborgs, versus the number one seed in blue of 1730, their first team driven, their first pick, 4522 Team Scream, and 1997 Stag Robotics. In Autonomous, both alliances launch volleys of game pieces into their speaker, but it's the Blue Alliance that holds a lead of 39-34, having scored 7 notes into their speaker to the Red Alliance's 6. Both alliances start to cycle back and forth, using both the amp and the speaker to try to maximize their scoring. While the Red Alliance seems to focus on just cycling back and forth with 1987 and 2357 switching off scoring into the amp, for the Blue Alliance you have 4522 Team Scream occasionally launching passes over the stage to themselves, as it appears that Team 1730 was unable to use their intake after auto. With about 1 minute and 10 seconds left to go in the match, the Blue Alliance has the lead, currently 64 to 56, but the Red Alliance is able to get 3 notes scored into their amplified speaker for a 15 point swing. At this point, the Red Alliance would grab the lead and hold on to win the match with a score of 99-90. to The second match that I want to dive into is going to be Finals Match 1. You have the number 3 seed alliance, kept in by 4766 Team Scream Jr., their first pick, 5809 the Jeshubots, and 5126 the Electromagnetic Panthers, whereas the number 4 seed in blue, kept in by 1764 Liberty Robotics, their first pick, 5801 CTC Inspire, and 8825 Team Eagle Eye. At the end of Autonomous, it's the Red Alliance that holds a lead, 29-21. However, the Blue Alliance quickly organizes an ampli amplification cycle, grabbing the lead 37-35 to after only the first 30 seconds of teleop. The Red Alliance is quick to respond, though, with some amplified speaker shots of their own, courtesy of 4766 and 5809, taking back the lead 45-44. to The score continues to swing back and forth through the rest of the match, with 5809 on the Red Alliance, lobbing passes over to their teammates, 4766, and 5126 playing some defense, trying to hold off the triple offense cycling of the Blue Alliance. With just 10 seconds left to go in the match, the Blue Alliance is in the lead 91 to 76, but CTC 5801 for the Blue Alliance, while racing back to their side of the field, makes contact with two Red Alliance robots in the stage area, incurring two G424 fouls, which is two technical fouls each. Then the Red Alliance is able to score two more last second amplified speaker shots into their speaker, to swing the match in the Red Alliance's favor, winning with a final score of 109-100. to 100. 
The Red Alliance would go on to win Finals 2 with a score of 105-70. to Congratulations to the winning Alliance, 47-66, Team Scream Jr., 5809, the Jesuit Bots, and 5126, the Electromagnetic Panthers. Team 5126 was also awarded a wild card, securing their invitation to this year's World Championships, thanks to already qualified Team 1108 Panther Robotics, winners of the Colorado, Colorado Regional, winning this GKC Regional's Impact Award. Also, shout out to Team 2972 Gears and Buccaneers for the Regional Engineering Inspiration Award win. Welcome to week 6 in the area of the West Region, where I'll be covering the Aerospace Valley Regional, the Hawaii Regional, and the featuring East Bay Regional. As we head into California, landing in Lancaster, we see the Aerospace Valley Regional hosting an astonishing 4 match finals. Appealingly, we have Alliance 1 versus Alliance 2, who both competed neck and neck, tying their first finals match 104 apiece. Alliance 1 ended up winning finals 2, and Alliance 2 winning finals 3. The rare overtime 1 match was then played where the autonomous routine really set the bar for Alliance 1 to play a catch up game. The final score ended up favoring Alliance 2 in red, where your Aerospace Valley Regional winners are 294. 2659 and 4322. With the Impact Award going to Team 2429, the Engineering Inspiration Award going to 2073, and a wild card was generated for 4322 for them to attend Worlds. Our flight from Aerospace Valley now lands in Honolulu, Hawaii, where the Hawaii Regional took place. Defending the blue banner is the famous 359 Hawaiian kids, who currently have won every single regional they have attended this season. In the finals matches of this regional, we have Alliance 1 playing Alliance 2, red versus blue. An interesting strategy we see here through the first minute of finals 1 is that Alliance 2 has a fully locked in defense spot that solely defends red while the other two play offense. Unfortunately for them, Alliance 1 took both matches by storm and won to secure a blue banner. 359 remains undefeated and joining them will be 368, 2348, and 8790 as your regional winners at Hawaii. The Impact Award goes to 2438, and two wild cards were generated for 2348 and the rookie all star 9498. Hopping back into California is our highly anticipated East Bay Regional, featuring the famous 254 and 1678 power couple as they show up to this newly titled East Bay Regional held at Berkeley High School in Northern California. Notable contestants for this new blue banner are 254, 1678, 972, 581, and many other NorCal specialties. But let's not waste time discussing the contestants. Let's see what they had to show us. 254 went undefeated in qualification matches, where in one particular quality, they teamed up with 1678 and 841 to score 152 points. Notice throughout the match, particularly as we round out the last 30 seconds, how this Red Alliance uses their amp carefully to maximize their scoring with playing triple offense against no defense. However, 152 points is merely scratching the surface of the high score at this regional. As we head into playoff matches, let's meet Alliance 2, who scored a whopping 179 points in match 8 of playoffs, and who would later contest Alliance 1 our previously mentioned power couple. Straight from the get-go, Alliance 2 in red would lead Autonomous 46-34, to but soon ramp up triple offense, two shooting notes from the back to 59-40 to continuously charge up their amp and rein in shots into the speaker. Of course, 179 points could not have been possible without six tech fouls help giving Alliance 2 an additional 30 points. Finally, let's take a look at the final matches of this regional, where Alliance 1, 254, 1678, and 1160 would play Alliance 2, 581, 5940, and 1458. In finals match 1, we have an incredibly narrow margin that favored Alliance 1 with a score of 128 to 126. Let's look at the match at 138 with the 138 second, uh, a minute and 38 seconds to go, where we see that both alliances are playing triple offense as through sheer firepower, they would both attempt to outscore each other. But suddenly with 30 seconds left to go, 1458 loses connection 
and blue is down by 15 points this match could not have gotten any more intense as it ended with the red only winning by two points this meant that alliance one would go on to win the second match as well making them the east bay regional winners the regional impact award winner goes to 26 37 and three wild cards were generated at this event for 1160 1458 and the rookie all-star 95 45 shout out to all these teams competing in the west region and for all these regionals in week six for hosting an amazing gameplay good luck to all these teams as we move forward to looking forward to world championships in a few weeks We'd like to thank Animark and Animark.com for their continued support of fun content. Animark.com is your one-stop shop for all your competition robotics needs. Featuring over 200 years of combined experience, Animark has now been in business for 20 years, servicing first teams and beyond. From electrical and mechanical, anything you may need, go to Animark.com to see how they can help your team and to get some of the best quality parts and the superior service that your team deserves. 48 teams ventured to Springfield, Massachusetts to compete at the New England District Championship this past weekend. Located at the Big E, there were lots of recognizable team names, all vying for that top spot in our division. It was a deep division, it had some stellar low seed alliances, and to prove it, our average winning score throughout qualifications was 95. It's just incredible. So let's get into it. The first match that we'd like to highlight that really demonstrated how powerful each of these teams were is a matchup between two low seeds. The replay of match six, the highest combined score of all the playoff rounds, played by alliances six and seven, both captains that declined higher seeds. In the original match six, the blue alliance would start the match with a disruptor auto, and both sides would play the feeder game. Alliance seven would take the match by a nine point margin. However, Due to a field fault, this matchup would be replayed. Right away, you could see the difference in strategies that these teams took with a chance to play again against each other. Teams would sprint to the middle in the first 15 seconds of auto to find game pieces there instead of being pushed out of the way by 27-13. Seven-seeded red would take a lead early by 10 points and head into teleop at 2.15 to start cycling. Each of these alliances has a sharpshooter archetype robot, 1768 on blue and 1699 on red. These teams would shoot from all across the stage zone while their partners fed amped and cleared cycle paths around them. Red hits an amplification early at 155 left in the match, adding to their margin. Blue then fires back, drawing the scores even closer, but it would be at the one minute mark that Red starts to run away with this match. With a last second shot from 1699 for a perfect amplification period, their score skyrockets by 20, leaving Blue to start playing the catch-up game. While Red climbs early at the 15 second mark, Blue is unable to capitalize on the extra time and the seventh seed would take the match and the Elim's high score. Finals two would also prove to be a very interesting match, although very different strategically. Uh, finals two of five, by the way, <laughs> would come down to a spotlight and a park, despite two very different strategic approaches. Red Alliance 2 had the advantage, winning the first match, but at the two minute mark in the match, the Blue Alliance would be up by 10. The three-seated alliance played three different roles on their alliance well, with 8013, who could only shoot from the subwoofer, 195, who was having accuracy issues all event, but turned into one of the best feeder and counter defense robots on the field, and 5112, who, as far as I'm concerned, is the greatest defense robot in the world. As the match would draw to a close with 30 seconds left, both alliances would amplify, but both would be far from perfect cycles. Blue would hit two, red would only hit one and miss another. That would end up being the difference as we head into endgame. As Blue hung with five seconds left, Red would hit two unamplified speaker shots, shifting the live score by one point in their favor. All eyes were glued to the screen as the scores were tallied, and it would be the Blue Alliance with 8013's last second trap score that would swing the match. Congratulations, 8013, 195, and 5112 on the win on the Richardson Field. And I'll hand it over to Connor to talk more about our other division, Ganson, and for the recap on how our third seed fared on the final Ingenuity Field. The Ganson Division, named after Arthur Ganson, was called home to the other 48 teams at the New England District Championship. During the 96 qualification matches, we saw some epic matches and some heartbreakers. While we have some interesting stats for you, the top five ranked teams had an average ranking score above 3.0, and the top 37 had a ranking score average above 2. That's insane. Among those top five teams, 
there was the number one ranked team, Team 125, the Neutrons. They ended up selecting their Greater Boston Friends, ninth ranked team, 3467, the Wyndham Windup, and 32nd ranked team, 5459, the Ipswich Tigers. A great alliance to follow. But we're going to follow the number two alliance instead, consisting of 131 Chaos, 6329, the Bucks Wrath, and Defensive Juggernaut, 19, 1729, Team Inconceivable. This alliance was wicked, as they played the same strat the whole time in the playoffs and never broke stride. As shown here in their first match, all three teams found a way to run multi-game piece autos, which isn't something we really got to see from a high-seeded alliance until now. Teleop began, and they were off to the races. 131 Chaos played a near-flawless shuttling strategy, with Bucks playing lights out, clean up with 1729 playing the defensive strategy we've seen them dominate all season long it propelled them to the uh through the upper bracket and into the finals where they met you guessed it the number one seed both alliances played the strats that punched their tickets to the finals and with replays galore it took nearly an hour to get through these matches the dust settles after three matches, and we have a division champion, your number two seed alliance of 131, 6329, and 1729. And now we move into the grand finals. It's the winners from Richardson in blue and the winners from Ganson in red. Welcome to the Ingenuity Field, and match number one is underway. Both alliances running the same strat they won on their fields. Shots going back and forth and the scores fluctuating. Results for match one go up and it is a tie. Both alliances regroup and the heat picks up. 5112 unleashes the Kraken and goes beast mode. Richardson up one match to zero, and we move into finals three. The battle of the century, the crown is on the line. Victory is within reach, and your new New England District Championship winners. 8013 the Boston Lions, 195 the Cyber Knights, and 5112 the Gongoliers. Congratulations! We have some awards to hand out. Congrats to the one rookie all-star 9644 Neo Robotics. Congrats to the two engineering inspiration winners, Team 509 Red Storm and 2079 4H Alarm Robotics. And congrats to the three Impact Award winners, 1071 Team Max, 2370 iBots, and 3654 Tech Tigers. This concludes the New England District. Good luck to all teams that qualified for Houston. I'll see you there. The first Mid-Atlantic District Championship took place at the Stable Arena in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. With the, from the time that the schedule was released, we knew that this was going to be a slugfest. Several teams were coming in having won both their qualifying events, those teams being 103 The Cybersonics, 2539 Krypton Cougars, and 5895 Petty Robotics. However, none of these teams would finish ranked in the top eight, thus guaranteeing we would not be getting more than one team with a clean sweep in the district. This also resulted in a very exciting Elims bracket, with close matches including match 13 in which a third level tiebreaker determined who would head to the finals. However, before we talk about finals, we have a few other matches to talk about. Starting off will be Elims match 11, the upper bracket finals. In blue, we have 1640 Sabotage, 5895, and 4285 Camelbots versus 1923 The Midnight Inventors, 4342 Demon Robotics, and 1391 Metal Moose in Red. In auto, the blue alliance wins the race to the middle line, giving them a 36-26 advantage. However, as soon as Taliop begins, red is better positioned and are able to get all the remaining notes from the midline. But, at two minutes left to play, we see that effective feeding from 4285 and note stealing from 5895 lets blue get the amplification first, and after three amplified notes, they have a 23-point lead. But, just as their amplification ends at a minute 48 left to play, Red is able to start their amplification, and the feeding from 1391 pays dividends as 1923 is able to score 3 notes during amplification, while 4342 scores 1. With a minute 37 left, we see the gap close to just 4 points. We then immediately see Blue start their next amplification round, however 1640 is only able to score 1 note during the period, and 5895 is just quite is just slightly out of sync. This is all Red needs as they begin their amplification and score three to switch the lead to the Red Alliance. Blue was never able to regain control, and 1923 just continues to score notes as fast as they are fed with the bare minimum time between their amplification periods. 
With a score of 157 to 108, Red Alliance takes the victory and punches their tickets to finals. The next match we're going to take a look at is, in fact, the next match, match 12. In Red Alliance, we have 316 The Lunatics, 2539, and 1168 Malvern Robotics. Versus in blue, 1493 Cougar Robotics, 3314 Mechanical Mustangs, and 3637 The Daleks. We see blue have the slightly more effective auto as they are able to get three of the five notes from the midline, thus giving them a five-point lead. At a minute 47 left to play, we see the red line start their amplification, however, blue is less than a second behind. During this amplification, we see the difference in the two side strategies become apparent. 1168 is handling amplification, while 316 and 2539 will feed them notes, then attempt to double cycle during amplification. However, on blue, 3637 is a full-time feeder, allowing the other two robots to handle the amp and only needing one of them to cycle. This allows blue to continuously be more efficient in their amplified cycles, allowing for more notes to be scored every time. This also has the added benefit of a blue robot always being near the source, preventing red from stealing notes, a strategy blue is actually able to implement quite a few times in the match. At the end of the match, both sides have an equal endgame, but despite being behind an auto, blue wins 140-109. to Next, we're going to fast forward all the way to the final match of the event, Finals 3. It's a rematch of Match 11, as the second seed was able to make it back to face the fifth seed, and both now have one win apiece in Finals. Unlike last time, Red would actually come out ahead in auto by just two points due to 1640 not crossing the line in auto. Coming out of auto, we see an immediate difference in strategy out of blue, as 4285 is put on full-time defense duty, while 1640 is now a hybrid feeder cycler for Petty. Because of the defense, 1923 on Red cannot be fed as, effic as efficiently, forcing them into cycling and then cleaning up notes when they can. At a minute 54 left, we see the strategy cha change pay off as Blue starts amplification first and are able to score three notes during the period. Meanwhile, on Red, thanks to defense slowing things down and 43-42 speaker scoring, as opposed to amping, they do not start their first amp period till a minute 36 left. During this period, only a single note is scored due to defense slowing them down and a missed shot from 1923. But at a minute 5 left to play, we do see the Red Alliance click, and 1923 and 4342 both score quickly in the amplified speaker, and a feed from 1391 allows 1923 to round out amplification with three notes. The two sides would trade the lead back and forth, however at 17 seconds left, 4342 pushes 4285 into the blue stage, resulting in two tech fouls. With both sides equal on stage points, the score would be a close one, 105 to 109, and a win for the Blue Alliance. Congratulations to the number two seed of 1640, 5895, and 4285 for their district champs win. Congratulations are also in order to team 9416IOWA on their rookie all star. 9015 Questionable Engineering would take home the Engineering Inspiration Award alongside 1923 for a double silver cling bing for midnight. While 316 and 1676, the Pascac Pioneers would bring home the Impact Award. With that, we wrap up the Mid-Atlantic District for the year. We look forward to seeing teams from the region compete next week at the first championship. Where do I even begin? This was a wild weekend in Macon. We have 50 teams from across Georgia and South Carolina come together at Mercer University to fight for a slot in the Worlds. The field was full of tenacious teams putting it all on the line, and many went home with bent chassis and frames. Qualifications were fun, as always. We had a Unicorn match of Qualifier 60, where all six possible ranking points were earned between the two alliances, and every qualification winning score was over 50 points. The really exciting part, however, as it is anywhere, was in the playoffs. Now, it wouldn't be a Peachtree District Championship if alliance selections took less than an hour, so props to the AV crew and MCs for attempting to keep us entertained with the constant Rick rolling. Earning the top rank was, of course, 1771 North Gwinnett Robotics. They would invite for the third time in a row, 2nd rank 2974 Walton Robotics to join them. This time taking with them a team that has been severely underrated all season long, 8575, the Dew Westerners. Honestly, it's amazing they were still available at this point. They were ranked 14th with a multi-note auto and fairly consistent shooting. This alliance would go on to set the world record twice before, of course, they were broken by a first-seeded alliance in California. Let's quickly talk about the first time that they did it. In semis match 1, it's of course Alliance 1 versus 8. 1771 has one of the best autos in the world. Combine that with 2974 helping them clean up the center line, and 8575 handling the auto line notes. They come out of autonomous with 48 points. Initially, 1771 would feed notes across the stage, while 2974 amped and 8575 hit the speaker, and all three would hit the speaker when it was amplified. Eventually, no one had to feed as 1746 from the other alliance fed all of their notes to the middle of the field by parking at the feeder station and rapid firing them across the stage. This left plenty of notes for Red to scoop up and quickly racking up the score to 157 before the end game. 
Their final score was 165 and 158 unpenalized. More than one playoff match saw robots slamming into the Lions wall hard, leading to driver stations falling off. Two of these times, matches had to be played as the driver consoles were in fact velcroed to the driver station, and this is considered a field fault. One other incredibly weird field fault happened too. In semis match 9, the blue line shoots a note and it bounces off the Lions wall just the wrong way. The note fell over the wall and landed on their own e stop. Rest and FTAs went back and forth with each other and with HQ. They didn't see it happen, and FMS data just showed that the e stop was hit. So they moved on, but eventually they found out that the note hit the e stop. So they planned to replay it. Of course, they found out later that it was their own alliance that hit that e stop with the note. So they reversed the call again. This would mean that the fifth ranked alliance of 6919 the Commodores, 1683 the Techno Titans, and 4451 Robots Garage would be moving on. They would continue to fight their way through the lower bracket and on to the finals against the number one seed. After semis, match 13, Alliance 5 had to call in 2415 the Wirecats as a backup thought for 1683. Finals match 1 was another thriller to be sure. Alliance 5 put up an impressive 34 point auto, but Alliance 1 outdid them by a mile, clearing every note on their side of the field and all of the center line notes. A perfect autonomous routine. They resumed their strategy from earlier, Walton playing Amp Amp Shoot, Due West on Speaker, and Gwinnett feeding quickly. Blue Alliance attempted a triple offense strategy with all three bots cycling from the source to the speaker and amp as necessary. With some better coordination, that could be a viable strategy, but they kept bumping into each other at the source and ending up off cycle. And while they were still putting up a lot of points, it was nothing compared to what the Red Alliance was doing. Red Alliance's strategy was good for about 145 points with 20 seconds left of the match. Walton would continue scoring for the next 15 seconds, and with 15, uh, 5 seconds left, Gwinnett would manage to drop a note in the trap. Due West would climb on one side, and Walton would park on the other. All of this would combine for a new world record at the time of 166 total, 164 un unpenalized. Finals 2, Alliance 5 would swap back in 1683, hopefully bringing them back to full strength. Red Alliance would once again come out swinging with another perfect autonomous routine. This would actually be the lowest scoring match for Alliance 1, however, throughout playoffs. But a bad match for this alliance is still a good one for many others. Try as they may to keep up, but the pairing of Gwinnett feeding and Walton scoring was too much for the Blue Lions. Taking home the win would be 114-75 to 75 would be our number one alliance. Congrats to the captain, 1771 North Gwinnett, who currently holds the top EPA rank in the world for Autonomous and 6th overall. And of course, to 2974, Walton Robotics, who have now won three events this season, in 85-75, the Due Westerners earning their first event win in team history. Due West would also earn a gold-silver double cling bling by taking home the two, uh, one of the two Engineering Inspiration Awards. The other one was won by 4112, the Eagle Bots. Impact Awards were won by 4188, Columbus Space Program, and 3489, Category 5, who also had two Dean's List finalists out of this event. Also in a spot at Worlds would be our two rookie All-Star winners, 9477 the Lambda and 9480 the Gear Bears. This has been a wonderful season, and thank you so much for following along with me. This is Justin White signing off. The first North Carolina DCMP was an absolute blast. With 40 teams competing, it was by far the biggest event in North Carolina and the most competitive. This event had a high score of 126 in the first bracket of playoffs. Several of the notable teams competing were 9496 Link, 2642 Pit Pirates, 900 the Zebra Corns, and 4795 the East Bots. The first important match of this event is match 7. This match was between Alliance 1, which included 9496 Link, 8795 East Bots, and their backup team 6639 Mechanical Minds, and Alliance 5, which included 587 The Hedgehogs, 7763 Carbo Robotics, and 3459 Pyrotech. The match started off with a bang in auto, with seven notes shot by the Red Alliance and four by the Blue Alliance. Even with seven shot by Red, the speakers only registers two scored, causing Blue to lead by seven points out of auto with the five missed notes by the speaker. Right, right away, both alliances get to scoring with Blue, sending off an amplification at 157, causing the score to jump to 42 to 21, Blue leading. Red soon hits an amp, narrowing their lead, but Blue responds just as quickly, leading them to maintain their lead of 23 points. A bevy of scoring continues, and the lead by Blue 
it stays this, roughly the same until endgame when Red is able to narrow the lead to 13 to 14 points. The score at the end of the match is 71 to 57, blue leading. While the referees de deliberate for a while, they end up in awarding an additional 25 points because of the miscounted notes in auto, flipping the match in favor of Red instead of calling a replay for a field fault. This is a controversial decision because Alliance 5 was unable to have the benefit of real-time scoring and might have thought they had won until uh, the change at the end of the match. Alliance 5 was eliminated in their next match. Another important match was Finals 1. This match was between Alliance 1 and Alliance 3. Alliance 3 includes 94-96 Link, 47-95 East Bats, and 1533 Triple Strange. Alliance 3 includes 2642 Pit Pirates, 87-38 Slice, and 68-94 Ice Java. Starting off in auto, both alliances put a large amount of game pieces, with Red leading by 3 points. Right after auto, a blitz of scoring takes place, with both alliances tied by a minute 55. Then both alliances hit the amp and they maintain their tied score. At the one minute mark, Red then has a one point lead and then with three notes scored and an amp speaker, Red jumps ahead. Blue then activates an amp, amp a few seconds later, but Ice Java got a note stuck in their intake at 40 seconds left, leading Blue to only have one amp note scored, causing Red to then gain an 11 point lead. With Red then continuing to score, but Blue having one robot down, Red is able to pull ahead. And then with them able to activate an extra amp session at 15 seconds left, they pull further ahead to a score of 115 and with three robots parked. Both Blue having two robots climbed and the penalties in favor of Blue, the final score is 118 to 114, Red winning. Our last match is Finals 2. Start off once again with Red in the lead out of auto. This time, 39 to 31. Right into Teleop, Red gets an amp off, increasing their lead, but then Link stops moving at a minute 55 remaining. They regain movements about, movement about 10 seconds later, but Blue is able to narrow their lead to six points. But uh, then Pit Pirate's shooter breaks, leaving them to play defense. The score ticks up gradually due to the broken robots, but then Slice gets a note stuck in the robot at a minute 25, leading Blue to only have one scoring robot in finals two. Then Link has issues where they are unable to score no at a minute 20, leaving them to play defense. Jumping forward to endgame, with Blue having just one working robot to Red's two working robots, the score is 88-64. With this gap, Blue is unable to catch up, and Red wins the event with a score of 104-68 to in finals two. A massive congratulations goes out to Alliance 1 for winning the event and sending the four teams on their alliance to Worlds. I also want to give a shout out to Alliance 3 for their valiant effort. Another huge congratulations goes to Team 9496 Link and 9707 the Volt Cats for winning the Rookie All-Star Award, giving them a, shot, a slot at Worlds. Also, congratulations to Team 9008 G-Force for engineering inspiration, along with Team 2642 Pit Pirates. This gave Pit a double gold and silver cling bling. Lastly, a massive shout out to Team 3506 Yeti for winning the first Impact Award, sending them to champs to compete for Impact. That is it for North Carolina District Championship, and congratulations to all the other award winners. Chesapeake's climactic ending was a sight to behold as 54 teams assembled at Virginia State University for the Chesapeake District Championship. Notes were flying at this event, enough so that out of 216 alliances in 108 matches, 136 hit the Melody RP. Through all 108 matches, sitting at the top was 836 Robo Bees. After having an up and down season with multiple instances of their intake falling apart on field, they came to this competition with a nimble and durable bot that dominated the field going undefeated in qualification matches. From the first seed, they picked the second seed, 1731 Fresta Valley Robotics, and rounded out the alliance with 539 Titans. You can just see how strong of an alliance this is. As in match one, they were popping off. In Autonomous, they actually started from behind with three other notes missing in auto, and 1731 coming up short on the race to some of the midline notes. While down 20 points after auto, the number one seed started off strong, immediately getting an amp cycle that put away three amp notes. Blue immediately is able to follow up on the amp, but only two amped notes go through in that cycle, followed by some um, unamplified speaker shots. 
This pattern is where the red aligns start to pull away. As with every amp cycle that the red does, they're able to make sure that three to four notes are getting scored during those periods, while blue is only able to confirm two to three. With one minute left, the C number one C took back the lead, and then in endgame, they were able to put the nail in the coffin with three robots up and one note in the trap, giving the win to the number one seed. On the other side of the bracket was the sixth seed alliance of 5804 Torch, 346 Robohawks, and 3136 Orca. After making a strong run through the lower bracket in match 13, they were faced with a rematch against the second alliance that sent them into the lower bracket earlier. Coming out of Autonomous, we noticed a difference in the match, as the second seed had missed two of their auto notes, while the, the sixth seed was able to sink all eight they got a hold of, giving the lead to Blue 44 to 31. Starting off in Teleop, we see the Blue Alliance begin their strategy of 346 running full field cycles, while 3136 flings notes from the opposite side of the field to feed 5804. At a minute 55 seconds left, we see in the middle of the field, 4099 have something fall off of their robot. Once back at the speaker, we see them stall a bit in their shot, causing it to miss the speaker during the amp period. At a minute 33 seconds, 4099 comes to realize that the uh, amp that at the amp that they can't get their elevator up for scoring, leading them to play defense at the wing. Unfortunately, their defense is enough as the six seed is able to parry and maneuver around the defender, giving the match win to the six seed, 118 to 89. Now the finals had a little lackluster of an ending. In finals one, we had the six seed have 31-36 disconnect a real wire mid-match, so the first match went to the number one seed. However, the second match was a little more interesting. Off the bat, we unfortunately lose 31-36 again as the same rear wire disconnects on the other end of where it was disconnected in match one. While the blue and lines had a hard time with 31-36 being down and defense from 539, you can watch red go completely unimpeded as 836 and 1731 just load the amp and sink shot after shot after shot into the speaker, making sure that every single amp cycle is held off on activation till the last second with a grand finale of three climbs plus two trap scores the red alliance wins the match capping off the chesapeake season with a district high score of 133 unpenalized big congratulations to the number one seed cementing 836 as the first team to earn three district championship wins big shout out as well to 9403 star stuff on rookie all-star 2068 metal jackets on ei and 5587 titan robotics on impact and a big congratulations to all of the teams who qualified for worlds i can't wait to see you represent the district so well and make us all so proud back at home the ontario provincial championship technology division saw 50 of ontario's best teams all compete to make it to the final field and face off against the Science Division for their chance at taking home the District Championship's Blue Banner. Just as a sample, this division included big names such as 610 Crescent Coyotes from Toronto, 1325 Inverse Paradox from Mississauga, 3161 Tronic Titans from Oakville, 4039 Makeshift Robotics from Hamilton, 4069 Low Ellen Robotics from Sudbury, 4476 Waffles from Kingston, 4907 Thunder Stamps from St. Thomas, 4917 Sir Lance Robots from Elmira, 5409 Chargers from Oakville, 5885 Villanova Wildcats from LaSalle, and many, many more. With such an insane lineup, this division was sure to deliver. And when the dust settled, by a single ranking point, it would be none of the teams I mentioned taking the number one seed, but instead 9098 Firehawks from Oakville would clinch the number one spot. They would invite 4907 Thunderstamps as their first pick and would round out their alliance with 5912 Copperhawks from Jordan. However, in a shocking series of upsets, the number one alliance would be eliminated in just two matches, losing to the number eight and number five alliances. This set the stage for an exciting Elims, and while I don't have time to go through every single alliance's journey, I'd like to point out in particular that match 11 was a rare 8v7 matchup in the upper bracket, and alliance 8 would end up taking third place overall. The finals would see Alliance 7 at 5409 Chargers, 7558 Alt F4 from North York, and 1285 the Biggest Birds from Mississauga face off against the number 2 alliance of 4039 Makeshift Robotics, 4476 Waffles, 1310 Running Mead Robotics, and 8729 Sparkling H2O from Kanata, who they'd, who they'd sent to the lower bracket earlier. However, Alliance 2 would end up taking both finals matches handily with scores of 111 to 91 and 131 to 103. 
Congratulations to the number two alliance. We'll see them again when Emma talks about the science division and the provincial finals. But I wanted to say a quick congratulations to all the teams that competed. Ontario was a spectacle to watch, and I'm looking forward to see, seeing how all these teams bring the heat next year. Incredible weekend in Ontario for FRC. Before we discuss the grand finale and the teams that are the 2024 Ontario District Champions, let's dive into the science division. This division looked scary from the beginning. 11-14, and so many more. Now, jumping right into qualification matches, teams brought their A game right off the bat. In qualification 46, 2056, 3683, and 2702 set the world high score at 150. Since setting this record, it has been topped, meaning that these teams no longer currently hold the world high score. Regardless of this, this high level of gameplay is still incredible. This alliance started by completely clearing both their wing and the center line during auto. And from there, they capitalized on that lead, cycling and properly amplifying to maximize the points they were getting. 3683 Team Dave did an amazing job scoring on the amp, while Rebels and OP passed notes so that there was enough in their wing to maximize during the amplification period. Endgame included 3683 pulling off a clean trap that ended up being spotlit, while 2702 and 2056 attempted a harmonized climb. Unfortunately, OP did not make it off the ground, but their attempted climb still counted as a park. Ending the match with 155 points, this alliance set the world record at the time of 150 clean. Now, moving on to playoffs of the science division, match 12 was the closest match, was one of the closest, making it nail-biting and exciting. Alliance 3, 4946, 1241, and 3739 took on Alliance 6, 2200, 4976, and 8081 for the chance to move on to that coveted match 13 to duke it out for a chance at the podium. This was actually a rematch of match four, where Alliance three, Alliance six came close, only losing by one point. Boy, do I know how that feels. Immediately out of auto, Alliance three had the lead after 49-46 stole centerline notes from right under 2200's nose. Both alliances worked tirelessly to outscore each other, passing notes over both stages into their respective wings. 49-76 showed off their amazing over-the-stage shot alongside 80-81, while 2200 cleaned up their wing. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough for the Sixth Alliance to beat the third. 2200 was up on stage during the endgame, but an unsuccessful trap cost Alliance Six those few points they needed to move on. Now, onto the grand finale. To crown the winners of the Ontario District Championship, we saw the winners of the science field, 2056, 4678, and 9785, face off against the winners of the technology field, 4039, 4476, 8729 and 1310. Both alliances worked incredibly hard to make it to this stage, dubbed Onstein by fellow recap correspondent Jeff. What an exciting final matchup. Taking a look at finals one. Incredibly, there were only three notes left on the field after the 15 second autonomous period. Both alliances opted to have one robot play a defensive role. However, this didn't quite work out for the technology alliance as 8729 just could not slow down the powerhouse that is 2056. The difference in divisions was clear during these matches, as the Technology Alliance was at a considerable deficit throughout the whole match. Finals 1 ended with 5 of 6 robots on stage. Congratulations to the 2024 Ontario District winners, Your Science Alliance, 2056 OP Robotics, 4678 Cybercabs, and 9785 Electrona. While the gameplay was exciting, so was the award ceremony. This year, two teams walked away from District Champs with three medals, now, do we call that cling bling cling or cling bling bling? Both 3049 and 4476 won their division, were event finalists, and earned the Impact Award. Our other Impact Award winners were Team 7712 ACCN Emoja. Congratulations to 9659 Van E Vikings on Rookie All Star and 3161 Tronic Titans for achieving the Engineering Inspiration Award. I can't wait to see all the qualifying teams on the world stage in Houston. Good luck, everyone, and go Team Canada! The first in Michigan state championship event was once again a treat, with 160 of Michigan's best teams together inside the Ryder Center at Saginaw Valley State University. In 2023, we saw a lot of upsets in divisional playoffs, and everyone was curious how 2024 would play out with so many high power teams clustered on each field. Without further ado, let's take a dive into the Hemlock Division. The Hemlock Semiconductor Division 
features some of the best scores in Michigan from the very best robots. We saw incredible teams like appropriately named 5712 Hemlocks Gray Matter, Hall of Fame teams 27 Rush and 503 Frog Force, as well as Team 51 Wings of Fire. Classic Michigan teams like 70 More Martians and 910 Fully Freeze, UP Titan 4391 The Brave Bots, and so many more populated this division. Hemlock was certainly going to be a force to be reckoned with on Fimstein. The question is, what teams would survive the bloodbath of this field? The first match to check out was an epic duel in qualifications match 61, featuring the Red Alliance of 56, 12, 27, and 71, 74, against the Blue Alliance of 33, 22, 37, 07, and 43, 91. All six of these robots were either first picks or captains on their alliances in playoffs, and oh my was this some high level play. Blue Alliance came out on fire with a 41 point Auton, and Red had the work cut out for them in Tele Up. A very unfortunate moment in this match came at 140 when 3322 got a note stuck in their, one of their wheels, and it took them out of the match for about 15 seconds. All six of these robots were flying throughout the field, scoring and amplified notes galore. Red Alliance was able to mount a comeback due to their effective amp usage, scoring 11 amped notes in Tele Up. 27 demonstrated their two, true powerhouse nature in this match. And when they team up with an equally as dominant 57 12th, every alliance in FIM was scared. Finals match 2 was especially notable for having a massive final score, with both alliances putting up a combined 265 points with penalties. The red, number 7, notice in red bumpers there, was teams 9 10, 36 55, and 71 97, and the blue number 1 alliance was 57 12, 27 51, and 4405. In Auton, 27 stole a note right out of 910's robot, however 910 was able to recover and grab yet another note from the midline. Wow! We saw the blue number 1 alliance fart hard in Teleop, and only marginally edge out, that, edge out that red number 7 alliance in each category, and they finished off endgame with a harmony to seal the deal. Congratulations to our Hemlock Semiconductor Division Champs, Team 5712 Hemlock Grey Matter, Team 27 Rush, Team 51 Wings of Fire, and Team 4405 The Adams Family. Keep watching to see how this insane alliance performs on Fimstein. The first in Michigan state championship consumers energy division was an action packed field consisting of a lot of top ranked teams like 302, 49, 4, 1506, 1684, 1701, 3538, 3572, 4381, 4967, 5675, 8517 and number one ranked 2054. This event started hot, with match one being decided by just wall point one point. Although qual the quals match was were close, with many teams dancing with the top spot, the number one rank would ultimately fall to 3538, the Robo Jackets, who would pick number one ranked in the state 2054. Starting Saturday morning, playoffs would be a barn burner. The first upset would come as the number six alliance would defeat the number three alliance in match four. Let's now go to match seven, where the red hot number one alliance faces the pass heavy number four alliance. Alliance one in red would have a, the lead coming out of Auton 31 to 26. Alliance four in blue would click, quickly take the lead as they amplified just 25 seconds into Teleop. This match would stay close, with Blue having a 60-58 to 58 lead going into endgame. Fierce defense from 4967 at the top of the Blue stage would prevent 2054 from getting back to their own stage in time to climb. All three Blue robots would climb and only one robot, red robot climbing with the other part. Alliance 4 would pull off the upset. 69 to 94, dropping Alliance 1 to the lower bracket. But Alliance 1 wasn't done quite yet. While Alliance 4 would beat Alliance 2 to go through to the finals, Alliance 1 would battle through the lower bracket to reach the finals after multiple close matches. The rematch was set. Alliance 4 in red, Alliance 1 in blue. The right to represent consumers at Fimstein and the win new blue banner was on the line. In finals one, it would start close, with blue having a five-point lead at the end of Auton. Red would spend the first 45 seconds of the match trying to keep up. The first lead change would come with just a minute and 30 seconds left, 
As red seemingly started to pull away, blue amplified to bring it back. Alliance Force Captain 4967 also seemed to have lost function with their shooter, turning them to defense. After the loss of a top scorer, the Blue Alliance started to pull away. The number one alliance would win this one 131 to 110. Finals 2 would be a completely different match. The score would be tied 36 to 36 out of Auton. Red would lead the entire match. But once again, 4967 would have shooter issues, leaving them on defense. At the final buzzer, Red was still in the lead, but due to the two blue traps, the number one alliance would punch their ticket to Fimstein. We want to congratulate the finalist alliance, 4967, 1701, and 3536. A huge congratulation also to the winning alliance, 3538, 2054, and 1684 for winning a very tough division and making it to interdivisional playoffs. Now, let's head over to the next MSC division. The Aptive division was packed with 40 great teams who gathered to compete at Saginaw for the Michigan State Championship this past weekend. Some recognizable names are 3357 Comets, 67 Hot, and 2767 Strike Force. Our first notable match is Playoffs Match 12, which was a rematch between Alliance 2 and Alliance 7. Over on the Red Alliance, we have Alliance 2, formed by 3357 Comets, 107 Team Robotics, and 2075 Enigma Robotics. Over on the Blue Alliance, we have Alliance 7, or the 226 Hammerheads, 7660 The Biting Irish, and 3604 Goon Squad. This lower bracket match was fueled by the team's desire to keep their alliance in the playoffs, with Alliance 7 already losing to Alliance 2 in the first round of matches. The scores were tied heading into Teleop, with each alliance having 41 points. The match goes on to be neck to neck. Over on the blue alliance, we see 7660 playing some amazing defense on 3357, especially around the 130 mark. Unfortunately for the Red Alliance, 107 did disconnect by their source. With 107 being a strong scoring bot, the Red Alliance weren't able to rack up enough points to maintain the lead as they head into endgame being down 80-90. to The match ends with the Blue Alliance advancing on to match 13 with 111 points to 96 points. The next match to highlight would be the one to determine who would represent the Aptor division on Fimstein. Finalist match 3 was a tiebreaker match between Alliance 5 and Alliance 7. Over on the Red Alliance, we have 4779 Robo Sapiens, 6090 Wayland Wildcats, and 3603 Cyber Coyotes. On the Blue Alliance, we have 226 Hammerheads, 7660 The Biting Irish, and 3604 Goon Squad. During Autonomous, we see 4779 using a troll auto, but costing them the lead, as the Blue Alliance built themselves a tremendous gap, going 36 to 11. Throughout the match, we see 6090 using a feeding strategy, mainly, mainly attempting to feed their partners 4779 at the beginning of Teleop. Despite the Red Alliance's attempts, the Blue, Blue Alliance maintains a strong lead throughout the match. The endgame period featured the Red Alliance having one climbed robot and two parked robots after a failed harmony attempt, and the Blue Alliance having three robots climbed. At the end, it was the Blue Alliance who had the opportunity to represent the active division as they took home the win with a score of 96-76. to Congratulations to all the teams who competed here. A huge congrats to 4779 Robo Sapiens, 6090 Wayland Wildcats, and 3603 Cyber Coyotes for becoming active finalists. Another round of congratulations to 226 Hammerheads, 7660 The Biting Irish, and 3604 Goon Squad, and 894 The Power Chargers for taking home the active blue banner last weekend. And then there was one. The DTE Energy Foundation Division was a showcase of Michigan's top talents, with the highest top 24 EPA of any Michigan competition all season long. This titan of a field had no surefire favorite, but plenty of teams made a strong case for that number one seed. Even after alliance selection, it seems that many alliances had assembled a trio worthy of making it to Fimstein. That being said, let's jump into one of the most influential qualification matches of the event, Match 74. Qual's Match 74 featured what would eventually become the top two seeds, Team 6081, the Digital Dislocators, and Team 818, the Steel Armadillas. In addition to this, 818's alliance was also stacked with Team 5907, the CC Champbots, and Team 1250, Gatorbots. 
making this a tough matchup for 6081. 6081's insane speed is featured throughout the match. For example, when they zip across the field at the start of Teleop after first scoring in the amp. 818 would choose to play defense in this match and cause lockups like at 115 remaining. 6081, however, being the smart robot they are, sees that traffic that 818 caused, chooses to steal from the red source instead, and continues to score. The Red Alliance goes on to win this match and allows 818 to squeeze into the first seed by one ranking point following their four RPs in match 79. Finals 1 was without a doubt the most thrilling, one of the most thrilling matches of divisional MSC, with a combined unpenalized score of 228 and some insane highlights. The Red Alliance, the number 2 seed consisting of 6081, 4362, and 6615, was smooth and well coordinated, and the Blue Alliance, the number 1 seed of 818 the Steel Armadillos, 33 the Killer Bees, and 857 Superior Rubbleworks, had the range shooting and robots to fight hard. Red had consistent autons all Saturday and would come out with a 15 point lead, a margin hard to fight back, hard to fight back from. 33 really impressed me in this match with their quick loading from the source, cycles as they spun around the field and some solid distance shooting. On the red side, speed was the name of the game. 4362 and 6081 both have stupid fast robots and they did a great job of coordinating their own lanes. At 142, all three red robots are at the source, yet through great skill, and patience, they're able to still effectively use it as 6081 feeds directly from the source. 4362 is just patient enough to avoid disrupting 6615, the Bell Villains. This coordination, in addition to their alliance's consistency, drove them to win the win in this match, as the red number two alliance goes on undefeated in DTE playoffs. Huge congratulations to this DTE winning alliance of 6081, the Digital Dislocators, 4362, the CSPA Gems, and 6615, the Bell Villains. Next stop for this powerful alliance was still on the DTE field, however this time it would be on the grand stage of Fimstein. Introducing the 2024 Fimstein Alliances, featuring 14 of Michigan's best and brightest teams. The DTE Division Champions, 6081, 4362, and 6615. The Hemlock Division Champions, 5712, 27, 51, and 4405. The Consumers Energy Champions, 3538, 2054, and 1684. And finally, the Aptive Champions, 7660, 226, 3604, and 89, 4, 8, 894. These teams were prepared to battle it out in front of a crowd of thousands on Saturday afternoon, and boy did they not disappoint. Each alliance brought a unique strategy to the table, from intense defensive Aptive to the passing hybrid of consumers. One of the more dramatic moments was in match 4 when DTE and consumers battled it out in a replay of their first edition of this lower bracket match. This match ended up being swung by one distinct moment at 1 minute 49 seconds remaining, when 3538 hits 4362's driver stations hard, resulting in them being out of commission for 25 seconds due to their driver stations falling off. 3538 would receive both a yellow card and a tech follow for this infraction, which ended up being the deciding force in this match. DTE continued to fight and overcame the intense defense of Team 7660, the Biting Irish, from Aptiv in match 5. 7660 has now won three straight events as a defense bot, and they are truly a force to be reckoned with. I can't wait to see what Lucky Champs Alliance picks them up in two weeks. Hemlock dominated the upper bracket, and the stage was set for our finals matches. Finals 1 and 2 were both intense, and amazingly featured six working robots in both matches. Finals 2 was extraordinary, and both alliances left it out all out on the field. Hemlock dominated Auton, coming out ahead 51-31. to 31. Wow. And Teleap DTE capped it up with their speed, however Hemlock's raw ability to score notes was simply unmatched. Hemlock used the amp very effectively, scoring 13 amp notes in just one unamped shot, compared to the 10 and 10 split of DTE. 57, 12, and 27 also did a world-class job of cycling opposite of each other, especially seen at moments like 140. In the end, despite a dramatic fall by 57, 12 while they attempted to trap, the Hemlock Alliance secured the victory 138 to 128 and were crowned Michigan State Champions. Huge congratulations to the Hemlock Alliance for winning the state championship, consisting of Team 5712 Hemlock's Grey Matter, Team 27 Rush, Team 51 Wings of Fire, and Team 4405 The Adams Family. For culture awards, Team 9758 Pantronics and Team 9455 The Dynamites won Rookie All Star, and Team 3656 The Dexter Dreadbots won EI. Our five Impact Award winners were Team 7166 Red Thunder Robotics, Team 5166 The Freeland Fabricators, Team 201 The Feds, Team 3604 The Goon Squad, and Team 548 The Robo Stangs. Best of luck to all 86 Michigan teams who qualified for the World Championship in Houston. Represent the Mitten Well.
Hello and welcome back to First Indiana for the District Championship hosted at Jefferson Featuring 38 teams with 11 champ spots up for grabs, everyone came ready to play, including 868 Tech Hounds coming off their second event win, 3494 Quadrangles with event win and finalists, many more. By far the most competitive event of the Indiana District, with many matches being decided by a single note or even tying, let's get right into it. Our key qualification match is match 76. This match would feature three alliance captains, two of which we're going to talk about heavily later. Red Alliance consisted of 4982 Olympus Robotics, 1501 Team Thrust, and Team 5484 Career Academy Wolfpack. Blue, we have 2197 Las Pumas, 9431 Snyder Panthers, and 9491. This match would largely define the same strategy as the elimination match. Three offense and either two main robots amping, then taking advantage of amplified scoring, or two running full offense while the third shuttle pieces across the field. This is how we'll see 1501 and 5484 work well together, with 5484 being the primary shuttle robot. We'd see Red Alliance pull ahead pretty early on, and with a minute 52 left in the match, we can see simply the single best cycle of crescendo that will happen all season. Looking at the bottom left, we can see 5484 attempt to shuttle a note from the middle of the field over towards 1501 so they can score it in the now amplified speaker. But this plan goes wrong when 5484 manages to launch it across the field directly into the amp, scoring one point instead of the five. Absolutely insane and maybe my favorite moment from the season thus far. This match would arrange the final rankings with 1501 becoming the eventual fifth alliance captain, 5484 becoming the sixth, 2197 becoming the seventh. Now moving on to alliance selection, picking was very interesting, as we would see so much inner picking, eventually the 14th seed would even become a captain. There were three main alliances formed that would seem the most likely to take home the title. First alliance comprised of 461 Westside Boiler Invasion and 4272 Maverick Robotics, 5402 Reckless Robotics seemed like the obvious choice, to many as they had a strong teleap period as well as a consistent auto. But alliances 5 and 6 would also prove Tricky. Alliance 5 had 1501 joined by 7457 Super Duper and 1747 Harrison Boiler Robotics. This alliance would scare many as the EPA of this matchup was incredible when all three worked efficiently. The only way these managed to pair up in the first place was due to each facing some difficulties in the competition and remaining a slightly late. Lastly, Alliance 6, led by 5484 and joined by 5010 Tiger Dynasty. 3940 Cybertooth just played well with an efficient shuttler and two very good scoring. Matches played out largely how they were expected, with the only true surprise being 2 versus 7, with Alliance 2 dropping to the lower bracket. After this, we had match 7, first and fifth alliance. This was expected by many to be the two finalist alliances. This would be a preview of what to expect. Alliance 5 would pull ahead in auto, and Red could just never quite catch up. While well, I brought it closer, the difference between Auto as well as Alliance 5's double trap at the end of the match was just too much. Alliance 5 would make it to finals, beating out Alliance 6, where eventually they met again. For context, this match had been slightly predicted by many superstitious roboteers as a match that would break at least one streak. 7457 is well known for winning every competition held in this venue, including three district events as well as IRI. However, they're also known to be routine district championship finalists. Finals 1 would end in a blue win, 124-93. Red Alliance looking like they had some robot issues to hurry in. Finals 2 would see them as much stronger strength, give them a win with a score of 127-105. to But it would all come down to Finals 3. With so much on the line, robots took off, and despite the 17 matches these robots had already been put through, this event alone, Everyone performed incredibly, including every note being picked up in auto, as well as a final total of 55 notes being scored. When the dust had settled, Alliance 5 would pull through his victory with a final score of 134 to 109. This would give Team 1501 their first banner of the season, allowing to them to guarantee to meet their minimum trend since 2014, as well as make 7457 the back to back to back to back to back Jefferson High School defending champion and end their unlucky state. Congrats to all teams for their incredible runs, as well as nail-biting finals matches that were truly anyone's game until the final scores were
Moving on to awards, 5484 would win both Impact and Woody Flowers finalist award, showing just how versatile their team can be both on the field and 461 would win Engineering Inspiration, and 9431 would win Rookie All-Star. Congrats to all teams for making the biggest Indiana State Championship, and good luck to all teams representing us at Houston. I hope to meet many of you there, but until then, and until our various off-season ventures, thank you for the great season and for reminding us all we're finna. Mercury was a toss-up. With six of the top ten teams in the, from the Texas District on this division, it was clear that Mercury was going to be a race for the number one seed. You had teams such as 3005 Robo Chargers, 118 Robo Knots, 6672 Fusion Core, 9128, and 9752 ITCAN and ITCAN Jr., and last but certainly not least, 2468 Team Appreciate. Alliance 1 consisting of 3005, 118, and 5892 Energy Heroes started off ELIMS with a bang, setting an event high score of 150. Despite their strong showing, Alliance 1 would go on to rock the blue bumpers after suffering a loss to Alliance 2 in Round 4, Match 11. In Finals 1, Alliance 2, consisting of 6672, 2468, and 6357, the Spring Constant, faced off against Alliance 1. They had beaten them in Round 4, but the question was, could they do it again? The answer, yes. Otto was off to a rough start as 2468 was forced to hit the A-stop. But missed shots from the Blue Alliance resulted in the Blue Alliance only having a two-note advantage at the end of the auto. During teleop, the score was close, but unfortunately for the Blue Alliance, 118 started having some issues. With 118 stuck only playing defense and 6357 preventing energy heroes and Robo Chargers and Robo Chargers free access to their source, the Red Alliance took the win with a score of 107 to 85. Moving on to finals match 2, Alliance 2 with the initial one was looking to take it home. Auto ended in Blue's advantage, but a miscount of notes resulted in Alliance 1 uh, starting teleop with only a one note advantage. Alliances were giving it all they got, as signified by 6357's and 3005's massive collision at the start of the match. Don't worry though, these two robust robots were able to still continue playing the match, while strategies were pretty much the same as they were from Finals 1, defense was cranked up to an 11, while Energy Heroes played some hard defense on 2468 to prevent them from feeding notes across the field. 6357 played some of the best defense I have seen coming out of the Texas District. It's been a while since I've seen so much pinning. It was very entertaining to see them play. The score was close throughout the match. One second red would be in the lead, the other second blue would be. Unfortunately for the Red Alliance, the end the, an end game stage infraction and a last second trap score turned the match in Blue's favor with a final score of 91 to 77. <clears throat> Going on to our tiebreaker, Finals 3 favored the Blue Alliance after a successful 8 note auto. While the Red Alliance seemed to continue with their pass strategy, Blue mixed it up a bit and prioritized getting notes from the opposing line, uh, Alliance speaker area. This combined with the intense defense on 2468 from the Energy Heroes resulted in the Red Alliance being forced to cycle to their source to get notes. In the end, the Blue Alliance took the win with a final score of 96 to 78. Congratulations to 6672 Fusion Core, 2468 Team Appreciate, and 6357 The Spring Constants for being finalists of the Mercury Division. I also want to send out congratulations to 3005 Robo Chargers, 118 Robo Knots, and 5892 Energy Heroes for winning the Mercury Division. The 2024 First in Texas District Championship of Hollow Division was a roller coaster of a division. With so many great teams such as 148 Robo Wranglers, 624 Kryptonite, 3310 Blackhawk Robotics, 3847 Spectrum, and 5414 Paradox, and so much more, this division was fun to watch. During day one of DCMP, there were moments where teams like 140 and 5414 were low in the rankings, around the 20s and 30s. But by the end of day two, they were able to rise up in the rankings and fix all the issues they came with. I know 140 and 5414 brought a brand new robot, so they had to fix the kinks, but they were able to make it and go up in the ranks. Now, the number one rank would go to 3847 Spectrum, who went undefeated in quals 12-0. They would go on to pick the number 5 ranked seed, 148 Robo Wranglers, and they would also pick 8874, the Cybirds, to finish off the number 1 alliance. 
Now playoffs was intense. Out of all the matches, only two matches had the winning alliance score under 100 points. We also had some upsets that happened in the playoffs that I want to mention. But before that, I want to say what the alliance won would go through playoffs without a problem, even in, in match 11, which we will get to soon. But finals, that was a fun one to keep an eye on. So we'll get to that soon. Now, in round one of playoffs, we saw Alliance 7 beat Alliance 2 in match 3, 106 to 89. Round 2, we had Alliance 8 beat Alliance 5 in match 5, 106 to 89. In round 3, Alliance 4 beat Alliance 2 in match 9, eliminating them, 102 to 86. And Alliance's 8 reign continues as they beat Alliance 7, 117 to 107 in match 10. In round four, Alliance 8 would continue to dominate, beating them, beating Alliance 4 in match 12, 110 to 99. Now, in round four, we also had match 11, which was Alliance 1 versus Alliance 3. This match was so close until it wasn't. After auto, Alliance 3 had the advantage 31 to 29. At roughly 1 minute and 12 seconds left in the match, Alliance 1 activated the amplification, which gave them a lead at the end of amplification the score was 80 to 55. alliance one would continue to hold on to that lead giving them the win 135 to 76. now in round five alliance three would beat alliance eight 118 to 80 sending alliance three to go back against alliance one and see if they can get revenge finals match one at the end of auto the score was 41 to 29 in favor of alliance three the match would remain in, in Alliance 3's favor, but they both would stay, stay neck to neck in performance and tally up. But during Endgame, Alliance 1 had two robots on stage and one spotlight, which is 10 points, plus an extra 10 points because of two trap notes. So 20 points during Endgame. While Alliance 3 only had two parks, which is two points and zero trap. But Alliance 3 would still get the win because of 20 points worth of penalties, giving the final score of 129 to 112 in favor of Alliance 3. Now, finals match two, Alliance 1 trying to recreate what happened in match three and send this best out of three to a tiebreaker. This time Alliance 1 would have the advantage out of auto 34 to 31, but the lead didn't help Alliance 1 as Alliance 3 would, con would keep on shooting amplified notes, which kept boosting their lead at the end of the match, Alliance 1 had 3 robots on stage, 9 points, and also had 7 additional points from penalties, but Alliance 3 still took the win 100-93, sending them to the Grand Finals of the 2024 First in Texas District Championship. Congratulations to 3847 Spectrum, 148 Robo Wranglers, and 8874 The Cybers for becoming the 2024 First in Texas Apollo Division Finals. Now, we are heading to the Grand Finals of the 2024 First in Texas District Championship. We got the winners of Mercury on red and the winners of Apollo on blue. Let's see how this goes. Grand Finals, match one. Auto was slippery as we saw the note, the center notes be sliding across the field by just robot content. Only two of the center notes were picked up at the end of auto. The score was 41 to 36 in favor of Mercury. During teleop, both alliances were doing one feeder, one cleanup, and one defense. But... The Mercury Alliance was dominating the match. Once the 22nd sound went off, the score was 52 to 102 in favor of Mercury. Both alliances went to go to climb, but Mercury Alliance took the win 118 to 64. Now, quick fun fact about this match. This match is actually 118's 100th match of the season, and they scored 118. You just gotta love it. Now, Grand Finals match 2. Auto was less slippery, but still intense. At the end of Auto, it was in favor of Mercury with a score of 46 to 21. Even with no missed shots into the speaker, it was all caused by notes not being picked up in Auto. Both alliances would continue the same strategy as before, but Apollo was being more aggressive to send them to a tiebreaker. But, unfortunately, Mercury held on to their lead so strong that it kept increasing giving the Mercury division the win, 146 to 82. 146 was the highest unpenalized score of the entire First in Texas DCMP. 
Congratulations to 624 Kryptonite, 3310 Black Hawk Robotics, and 2689 Team Alpha for winning the Apollo Division and becoming the finalists of the 2024 First in Texas District Championship. Huge congratulations to, to 3005 Robochargers, 119 Robonauts, and 5892 Energy Heroes for winning the Mercury Division as well as winning the 2024 First in Texas District Championships. Mercury is officially 2-1 in the first in Texas DCMP records, winning it back-to-back -back so far. Now, for awards, this is going to be a pretty long list as we have two Impact winners, two Engineering Inspirations, and two Rookie All-Star winners. Let's start with the Rookie All-Star reward. Congratulations to 9476 Robocolts and 9418 PastaBots for winning the 2024 first in Texas District Championship Rookie All-Star Award. For engineering inspiration, congratulations to 8019 Patriot Engineering and 5417 Eagle Robotics for winning the 2024 First in Texas Regional Engineering Inspiration Award. Now for the Impact Award, congratulations to Team 118 for the Triple Gold Kling Bling and 2468 Team Appreciate for winning the 2024 First in Texas Regional Impact Award. These six teams will compete for the respective awards at Worlds. Good luck to you all. I also want to give a huge shout out to Team 118 for their eighth blue banner of the season. What a huge record. And I know they're aiming to increase it to more. I also want to give a few more shout outs. A huge congratulations to Jose Luis Lopez from 8819 Patriot Engineering and Sam Black from 4717 Western Robotics for becoming the two Woody First in Texas Woody Flowers finalist award winners. I want to congratulate the five First in Texas First, Dean's List of Finalist Awards, Rhea from 2468, Jolin, also from 2468, Ellerin from 9181, Krish from 9478, and Zane from 2158. Now that week six has come to an end, I want to congratulate all teams that have competed this season. Congratulations to the 29 teams at First in Texas, plus 118 as well, that have qualified for the 2024 FRC World Championship. Excited to see what you all do. Bring another ban Einstein banner to Texas. Pacific Northwest District Championship this past weekend, we saw 50 teams competing at the Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Portland. This was certainly an event to remember. We saw so many standout teams. Trident 10 is coming in as usual stronger than ever with a 5 point EPA boost since the last event. 2521 who entered this event um, with an astonishing 34 to 1 record and so many more teams. By alliance selection, each and every alliance was absolutely stacked, each and every one with strong teams to the point where strategy was the most important factor of this event. This is the most important thing about this event. Strategy. Set product shows the total average total EPA for each alliance is falling at about 104 with highs at 117 and lows at 95. This is truly showing how competitive um, and equal this event is looking. Looking into our first match of the elimination bracket, Alliance 1 versus Alliance 8, we see our first major upset. Alliance 1, home to 2910 and 2046, some of, if not the top teams in the district, who have won the district championship together not once, but three times in 2019, 2022, and 2023. Um, they are on, against each other on the 8th alliance. They are against the 8th alliance, for, uh, captained by 4450 with 3060 and 3663, holding two event wins over the season with an all but respectable and strong teams. Auto starts off with Alliance 1 on red, pulling slightly ahead with 6 notes into the speaker compared to blues of 5. Both alliances start off by cycling right off the bat. At 2 minutes remaining, we see um, 9036, which is red's second pick, get a note stuck in their robot. They spend a good amount of time trying to get it out. Later on in the match, each alliance is still roughly neck and neck when we see 360 with parts stinging off their bumpers. About a minute and 37 seconds left in the match. Uh, then at uh, a minute 10, we see 360 and um, Roman Robotics uh, collide and stop moving. Uh, then directly after, between 3663, um, shooting two notes into, um, into the speaker while amplifying, as well as 4450 shooting a note and getting a foul as 9036 touches them in a protected zone, we see the 8th line start to pull ahead. The score of 73 to 85 as both bots head back to score again. Uh, this leads stick with the blue alliance as um, to the end where blue comes out victorious 101 to 112 sending alliance one to the lower bracket when alliance one um, while alliance one does have the stats proving they are an effect um, their effectiveness on the field the trend of them losing based on strategy holds true all throughout this event 
they win another match in the lower bracket, but ultimately lose in match 10 to Alliance 2. Speaking of Alliance 2, in match 8, the second Alliance, which um, is captained by 2811 with 2521 and 1899, go up against Alliance 6, 1318, 1540, and 6443. This match is very significant due to the um, it holding the highest score in playoffs, as well as um, holding both of the finals teams. Astonishingly, um, auto starts off pretty even as both teams score 8 notes, both cracking 40 points. Starting off, at, um, off the match, the Red Alliance gains a slight lead of about 5 points. Uh, but Alliance 6 shows a strong strategy that they have ran all throughout playoffs. 64-43 cycles as normal, but 15-40 shoots notes across the field into the corner as 13-18 uh, scores into the amp twice. Then once they have all amplified, um, all three robots shoot into the speaker. This leads to incredibly quick and efficient cycles, making it the best strategy I've seen in eliminations this weekend. Uh, we see this play take place all throughout the match and leads to Alliance 6 keeping a lead albeit 2811 having a note jammed into their amp mechanism. This leads to a 30-point lead, but at the time match ends and climbs are factored in, the score comes out to 112 to 144, a very high score for this event. Uh, we see this matchup again in the finals, where they each win uh, one match and are onto a tiebreaker of match three. Um, all three um, of these matches were incredibly close. Both alliances are, as, are very equal as far as I'm concerned. Alliance 2 experiences some breaks in the first um, final, but in the second, um, but then in the second one, they won. But um, here in match 3, Alliance 6 uh, wins the match, making them the new district championships champions, inducting two new champi champions into this position. Congrats to 13-18 for winning this event, as well as 15-40 and 64-43 for becoming the second and third Oregon team to win the championship marking the first win in nine years, dating back to 2015. Also, congratulations to 94-50 and 96-13 for winning Rookie All-Star, as well as 24-12 for winning Engineering Inspiration. Finally, congrats to 41-31 and 41-25 for winning Impact. This event was a truly amazing event to watch. Um, it's one of the best Pacific Northwest events I've seen, really, ever. Congratulations to all uh, PNW teams who have competed at this event um, and for everything this year. And good luck for uh, the 22 teams convincing to the uh, World Championship in two weekends. Well, that's going to do it for FRC Recap Week 6. Good luck to all teams competing at the World Championship. We can't wait to see you there. We're going to be filming a lot of teams and a lot of other great stuff as well, too. We'll have a brief overview of the championships on FRC Roundup the Monday after championships, but no full recap will take place as well. Recap is going to be re-evolving into next season as well, so keep an eye out for some of the changes that we'll be making, and we appreciate your feedback as we continue to make content to serve you, our community, as well. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and make sure ring the bell to stay up to date on all fun content and if you don't mind give a, a video a big thumbs up it really does help the algorithm as well we'll see you next time and good luck to all teams at the world championship this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.